Chapter 10 is all about moving charges during a chemical reaction. In order to talk about moving charge, we have to first talk about how much charge different atoms have. It's pretty easy to do that in an ionic compound because the ions have charge. It's a little bit more difficult to do when dealing with covalent compounds. So when dealing with covalent compounds, we're going to look at something called oxidation numbers. The book refers to these as oxidation states. Those are synonymous terms. An oxidation state is the relative charge on each atom in a compound. And I have the word charge in quotes because we're not talking about ionic compounds always. We can also talk about covalent compounds and talk about whether one atom is relatively positive or negative compared to other atoms and how much so. There are a number of rules for assigning oxidation numbers. In fact, section 10.2 in the book is all about assigning oxidation numbers. In this video, I want to focus on the shortcut method presented in the book. This is on page 375. It looks pretty complicated, but if you go through the rules, you'll realize that we actually know most of them. Here's the chart provided by the book. It breaks it out into eight different rules, strangely numbered rule one through seven. They sneak in something called the halide rule, which we'll talk about in a moment. So we can talk about these rules individually. The first one says that if you have a pure element, that pure element will have no charge. So we will say it has an oxidation state of zero. The second rule says that the oxidation state of oxygen is normally negative two. And we know that already. Oxygen is in group six, and we know that oxygen generally forms negative two as an ion. It generally forms negative two in all compounds. There are some exceptions, but for the most part it's negative two. Hydrogen also generally forms a positive one charge. We saw that with our acids. Again, there are some exceptions, but in covalent compounds in particular, when hydrogen is bonded to a nonmetal, it's going to have a positive one charge. The next two rules are familiar. Group one atoms form a plus one charge, and group two atoms form a plus two charge. And rule six simply states that if you have an ion, specifically a monatomic ion, the oxidation state is the charge on the ion. So really, these rules, one through six, are ones that we've been following all year. They sneak in this halide rule between rules six and seven, but again, this should be familiar, that halogens generally have a negative one charge. There is an exception. You could have halogens bonding to each other. The more electronegative atom will take the negative one charge. So in short, fluorine with the highest electronegativity will always be negative one. And if any other halogens are bonded to fluorine, then they would have to adjust. The final rule is the one that's gonna kind of drive the rest of this video and the homework tonight. When you add up the oxidation numbers or the oxidation states of all the atoms in a compound, if the compound is neutral, then the oxidation states have to add up to zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, then the oxidation states have to add up to the charges in the ions. So let's take a look at an example of that, and then you can get to the homework. First rule, if you have a pure element in its natural form, the oxidation state is gonna be zero. Doesn't matter if it's a diatomic element, doesn't matter if it's a monatomic element. It doesn't even matter if it's one of the weird ones like phosphorus or sulfur. In their pure form, their oxidation states are going to be zero. The oxidation state of an ion is the charge on the ion. So the aluminum ion is a plus three oxidation state. And oxygen, as we see, is almost always negative two. And if you add up the oxidation states, they should add up to the charge of your molecular ion. So water is a neutral molecule. So if you take the negative two from the oxygen and the two positive ones from hydrogen, you get a sum of zero for your oxidation states. The hydroxide ion, however, has a negative one charge as an ion, but if you take the negative two for the oxygen and the positive one for the hydrogen, you end up with a negative one oxidation state. And we can use that if we deal with something that we're not sure what the oxidation state is. So this here is the dichromate ion, Cr2O7, and this whole ion has a negative two charge. We know that the oxygens all have a negative two charge. So with seven oxygens, that's a negative 14 charge. If the polyatomic ion has a negative two charge, that means the chromiums must have a positive 12 charge to cancel out much of that negative 14 charge. And if we have two chromiums, that means that each individual chromium would have a positive six charge. So I would have a positive six, a positive six, and seven negative twos to give us a total charge of negative two.